Today's throwback, we're having a look at the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 2 Screams Ghostface. Just finished recently, actually finishing up Season 2 of the TV series Scream. Really loving it so far, I have to admit. And I thought it was a perfect time to go back and have a look at the original Ghostface. Uh, it's as seen in the original motion picture Scream, of course, then spawning three sequels and two uh, seasons of the TV series. And though, truthfully, it's not obviously Ghostface that's going to be appearing in the TV series. Again, I wanted to go back and look at the original Scream design. Uh, spin around the back of the package. Let's spin it this way as well so you can get a better look at it. Other figures available in this wave. There's the Halloween Michael Myers, the Crow Eric Draven, Psycho, Norman Bates, Bride of Chucky, a deluxe box set, a Child's Play 2 Chucky, Scream Ghostface, and Pumpkinhead, Pumpkinhead. Other things available down below, there's the Spawn the Dark Ages, Series 14, Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, Ozzy Osbourne, Beatles, Yellow Submarine, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, and Techno Spawn, Series 15. By the way, if you were to set your time machine back, you would be setting it to 1999 as to when this came out. So it's 17 years old. 17 years old. Unbelievable. To check out more from McFarland Toys, go to www.spawn.com. You can also go to www.mcfarland.com as well. Spot's going to take a break. Now, I'm actually not going to open this one. I've already got Ghostface uh, opened as we've had a look at him before. So we're going to take a break. I'm going to get that figure. And when we come back, we can get a better look at Ghostface. There's more heading your way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Just before we have a look at Ghostface here, Spot's got to be honest about something. This is actually the one that we had a look at in the packaging. I just, well, between the broken knife that we experienced from previous videos of the Ghostface killer and the fact I couldn't find the poster, I just ultimately opened up, I know, I just opened up the one that we just had a look at. So this actually is the brand new, in, in that sense, it's the brand new version of Ghostface. All right, let's have a look at the display stand that first comes included with Ghostface, and then we'll have a look at the figure itself. I believe there were a couple of variations to the poster itself that was in the uh, the actual frame here. This is a this is a something that I think just doesn't is not done justice anymore any, uh, with collectibles. It's these. I loved that McFarland Toys being also the first sort of company that was producing horror figures also gave us these. I love these display stands. Just super, super cool. Unfortunately, it also means that when you display them, uh, being that this is just cardboard in between, there's nothing on the back to protect them. That, yeah, these can get punctured. These could get bent. And uh, and I've seen some rip. Uh, but in the meantime, the these are in pristine, or this one is in pristine condition. I like the coloring on it as well. Uh, kind of a a yellowish greenish wash that they put onto it. More yellow, I would say, than green. Kind of like a brownish yellow. Movie we'll Maniacs down below as well. Love the skulls all over the place. That looks really, really cool. I would just wish that they, companies would still kind of do this. You know, this is just a lost art, if you ask me. Uh, other accessories, the infamous, very infamous broken knife that has been broken in previous videos when Spot had had a look at the Ghostface Killer. I guess this is what the... This is technically, I guess, a throwback of a throwback, I believe. I spotted already had a look at him, but I want to do it again. I want to have a look at him again. Different backdrop, different camera. Same same guy here doing it behind the scenes. But he does come with the knife. Hunting knife there. And he, of course, comes with his phone. Which, by today's standards, even comparing it to the TV series of Scream, it's a completely different element altogether. The phones back in the day, you know, you would just have somebody calling you on your phone. Nowadays, you have, you know, voice distortion apps. You can uh, text somebody using your phone. You can use your phone. They even use their phone as alternates to flashlights in the series. So it just goes to show, you know, flashlights are gone. GPS are gone. These kind of phones are gone. Basically, the smartphones have taken over for all of those things. Uh, there is a peg on the back side of the phone. It's actually kind of cool that I'm looking at this again anyways, because certainly technology has changed since I had a look at the original Scream as well. So 
It's kind of like, you know, looking at the past. Technology, killer designs, you know, all that stuff. Uh, the phone itself does have a little peg on the back side. He does also have a, a hole in his hand. And though not the most believable approach at this, you can have the killer holding the phone, just like magnetized to his hand. You could kind of tilt the phone so that you at least know gravity is not working against him, but to have it just simply tilt up, it looks obviously like he's not holding his phone. The knife also can be fit into his hand. This is obviously, and I don't even want to say it, I'm not even going to say it. it. It should fit in his hand. It's a very snug fit though. Very, very snug fit. And I believe this is when I went and I broke the knife. But it does fit into his hand. It fits very, very difficultly though. There we go. And it fits into his hand. Not the easiest though to take out. Not the easiest to put in. Don't push your luck, but just saying that probably will get broken at some point. Now that I've said that, I probably will break it in this review. Oh, I just cursing myself again and again and again. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's take our, do our best to take the knife out and not break it. There we go, put that to the side. All right, so let's have a look at the original ghost face. And I guess this isn't necessarily the original Ghostface. This is just the Ghostface. Because Ghostface really isn't in the series. It's Brandon James, or the mask. The mask that he wears. He wears, of course, Scream. It's all about who's wearing the mask. But in the series, if you haven't watched the Scream series, I reluctantly got into the se season one. Not quite sure what I was going to make of it, but by halfway through season one and now finishing season two, I have to admit, I really am enjoying the series. I also like the design of the mask. It's gone are the days of the old Scream-inspired painting mask that goes face here, sports. I think it's a good updated take. The Brandon James mask is quite cool, I have to admit, and very scary. Though back in the day when this Scream killer was around, this mask was also equally scary. I like the hooded cloak effect that this killer had. A slight departure, of course, but obviously when he's running, things like the little uh, straps of fabric was moving around. It, it, he had a lot of just phantom-like uh, qualities to him when he was running and chasing, uh, you know, uns unsuspecting, or I guess by that point, suspecting teens. Uh, the figure does a pretty good job. Of course, comparing it to, say, the likes of NECA, who released a more articulated version of Ghostface later on, and I might do, I might do a review of that again. Uh, this one does come across a little bit more basic. Basic in the sense that he's pretty much pre-sculpted, he's pre-posed, but that's basically what McFarlane Toys was doing back in the day. Let's have a look at his face. His face, or his mask in this case, a very creepy looking Scream mask. I don't know, perhaps nowadays some might say that's a rather ridiculous looking design. But back in the day, that was a pretty scary looking, pretty scary looking design, I have to, I have to admit. The rest of his body is all primarily black. There's absolutely no coloring to speak of, other than if you want to count the brown of his shoes. Touching a, paint, a point that I made earlier, yes, he is rather pre-posed. Basically, what he's doing right now is what he's doing on display. Now, there's some mileage you can get out of the figure in the sense that he does have a rotation in the waist. Uh, slight head articulation, not really all that much. Uh, arm articulation, but again, it's just a straight swivel. And the, arm, the arms also articulate. Slight articulation also in the hand as well. And also in the boot. But the problem is... As with other McFarlane toys, uh, to s rotate the arms in any other way other than how they're intended, they end up looking disjointed and just like like they've been cut off the shoulder. With this arm, for example, you can move the arm all the way up, and it still keeps a consistent fold or consistent movement or motion in the in the cloak. In fact, that's probably the more accurate way of displaying him. But you can also display him on the flip end of it, displaying him like this. I don't feel it, it's as fluent of a motion, but again, it kind of still looks, it looks pretty accurate. When you start turning it sideways though, that's when you start seeing all this extra cutting of the shoulder. And it just, it looks off. 
Same thing also with the arm. The arm's not as bad because of the way it's been cut. You can kind of move the arm any which way and it still looks pretty good. Same thing also with this arm. You know, you can rotate it in a certain positioning, but it feels like it wants to be probably like right about there, for example. So I guess if we want to get it to a more natural, if dare I say natural, I guess you'd want to have it kind of like that. That's basically what I'm getting from the way the folds are. It looks like the folds should naturally flow like that. And then of course you can incorporate the hand, incorporate the, the cell phone, the knife there as well, and you're good to go. Uh, he still stands well, that's no issue right there. I mean, the majority of the underside of his body is completely filled in, so there's no, uh, you know, there's no excess amounts of rubbery plastic down there. It's it's basically a brick from, from like the waist down. But still a great looking figure. Uh, neck is far better, granted, but you know what? You kind of have to appreciate where some of the figures originated from. Long before NECA was doing this, McFarlane Toys was releasing Movie Maniac figures, and figures such as this, I think still, I don't know, they still hold a soft spot in my heart. I mean, they're, you know, they're dated, yes, I understand that, but there's something to be said for collecting and going back and collecting some of the Movie Maniac figures. They're relatively inexpensive. Some figures are a little bit more expensive than others, but, uh, you know, figures like this, I think, can still go a long way on a collection. Like, don't overlook them just because they're older figures, 1999, wow, that's a long time ago. But uh, not a bad looking figure. I figure with the introduction of the new Brandon James killer and the new Scream TV series, it was a perfect time to go back and have a look at where it all started. Not necessarily, well, I guess it all started with Scream, but it all started also with the Ghostface killer from the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniac Series 2. On a side note, I hope NECA Toys can give us a Brandon James a Scream killer. That would be so very cool. In the meantime, today's throwback, which potentially could have been a throwback of a throwback, we were having a look today at the Scream Ghostface Killer. I also might want to point out, too, that the knife still is intact. Curse be gone. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more throwbacks, more videos, more everything heading your way soon. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.